Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gehgesha Basu. I am 15 years old and the founder president of my own youth organization called Green Hope. I live in Dubai, which is surrounded by some of the fiercest deserts of the world, and we face the impact of climate change at its harshest every day. The weather is our greatest adversary, and thus we need to adapt our daily lifestyles to combat it. Water is our most precious resource, in some ways more precious than oil. Thus, water conservation, fighting land degradation, and adapting our lifestyles to become more sustainable are three aspects on which I endeavor to engage civil society, especially young girls. The global fraternity has now defined its vision for a post-2015 development agenda by agreeing upon an ambitious set of 17 sustainable development goals. In a few weeks from now, under the auspices of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, these same governments will ink a new universal agreement in December 2015 in Paris at the Climate Change Conference to both address the threat of climate change and deliver on the opportunity of combating it. These two pathways, though coming from two different backgrounds and having their own dynamics and challenges, must be mutually supportive and interrelated. We must take all necessary steps to restrict global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. A warming climate will impact the availability of fresh water, food security, and energy, amongst other necessities. Climate change and development goals cannot be pursued separately. At Green Hope, our work focuses on creating awareness through our environmental academies, workshops, and conferences. We are reaching out to young people of our region, educating and empowering them to take grassroots action to mitigate the environmental challenges. Our organization is run by youth for youth because we feel that the message is conveyed seamlessly when peers talk to each other. Every month, we have been conducting environmental academies which are tailor-made workshops varying from two-hour sessions to full-day events targeting students from schools all across the country. Participants learn how to calculate their carbon footprint, means of stopping land degradation, understand the concepts of sustainable consumption and production, climate change impacts, biodiversity conservation, and the need for climate justice. Tree planting is an integral part of all our academies as we feel that this is the simplest and most effective way of combating land degradation and reducing our carbon footprint. It is also very relevant to the region we live in since deserts surround us. Till date, we have planted over 3,000 trees. Any developmental action plan must provide equal opportunity without any kind of bias. The same holds true for the climate action plan. This plan must be specific to regions and take into account local challenges and biases with regards to all sections of civil society. With regard to our own initiative, our academies are not gender segregated. They are open to all and we insist on equal opportunities for both genders. With the global population crossing 7 billion, the Earth's finite natural resources are under tremendous strain. 
Economic progress is being achieved at the cost of the, in of the climate and the environment, while paradoxically, the polarization between the global north and south continues to increase. The youth of today are aghast at the escalating rate of environmental degradation as a consequence of climate change, and we are seriously concerned at the prospect of us, future generations, inheriting a barren planet that cannot sustain its inhabitants. The time for half measures is over. We have been waiting since 1997 for global leaders to take concrete steps to curb emissions and reduce fossil fuel consumptions. The world can no longer wait for another conference to decide on how much emissions should reduce by. The post-2015 development agenda and the Paris summit must converge into one pathway. I call upon all fellow advocates of climate justice to urge our leaders to take bold actions which are far-sighted and not hampered by economic short-sightedness, if not for their own selves, then at least for their children, so that the future generations don't have to grow up wearing gas masks. The time to act is now. Stop climate change before it changes you. Thank you.